Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're setting the stage for our last game of the day, a trial by fire for international wildcard Payne Gaming against Korea's Ku Tigers. Now, this will be a telling first test for both teams who we have yet to see on 518. So, gentlemen, what should we look for primarily when looking at this matchup and these teams? Uh, well, for me, with Ku, they were looking better. They had been in a little bit of a slump before entering the playoffs, and they had a very strong run. They brought back uh, the Malphite pick, which is actually a pick that has never been used very extensively competitively before but was a very important part of their playoff run and then we saw it kind of ripple out and that's that's the story of the coup tigers are any of these guys kind of top tier players a couple of them are gorilla and smeb but the rest of the team is fairly average at this point despite prey being a legend in his own time but it's been about, for them, innovation. The Juggermaw composition is something that they invented, and it just caught on like wildfire around the world. And we've seen this time and time again. So coming into this brand new world, this, this big new patch, what does Ku have? Because they've got something crazy. Yeah, they could have something up their sleeves. Mm. But then again, when we look at them going up against the wild card team in their group, the, the, the team that they should most easily beat. Do we even expect them, you know, to come out and say, first game, first game of Worlds, let's show our hand? No. Well, if you have crazy <laughs> enough stuff, it should, you can show as many things as you want, and nobody will be, will be able to guess what you're actually plotting behind. But uh, what I like about Payne coming into this matchup is that you mentioned it's very easy to identify the strengths of Coup. But Payne is also pretty good at identifying their own weaknesses and not playing against them. When they faced off in the finals, their CB low finals against INTZ, they clearly could not play the macro game against them. So what they did was they completely switched up their style. And we're like, we were just going to play lane, win game, and try to out-micro you by just better mechanics. And they did that, and they won 3-0. So they might try a similar style here in which, okay, we are not really in the same caliber as Ku Tigers in this regard, but maybe there is a little... Oh, I, I can't say... Maybe there is a weakness in them that they can actually exploit, and that's what I want to see uh, in them because they have the mechanical talent to do so. Now, something that Ku, had, Ku has been... I won't necessarily say criticized for, but something that has been attributed to them is long game time. However, coming into Worlds, the team with the longest average game time, Pain Gaming. I, I think like long game times usually means low quality games with low quality teams in most cases. Like we saw the previous game, <laughs> the longest game today, and it was pretty, pretty low quality if you think about it. But in this matchup, I think these, this, this low quality player that I'm talking about, I don't think he will fly against Ku Tigers because to me, Ku Tigers is the most underrated Asian team coming into this tournament because I will, I'm expecting a lot from them. This is a dark horse. Yeah, I am too, and it's just... It's again, it's all about that macro game. It's about their innovation. And the reality is this group is so weak that may, they may not even have to show anything until quarterfinals. And then perhaps they can take an upset win. I think they will eventually in this tournament be, be out, just outplayed, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, but a semifinal finish I don't think is unreasonable. All right. Well, for the final time today, we're looking for your predictions. And again... We're going to go down the line. I feel, <laughs> I feel I know what's coming. We're going to go crumbs, you model, then to Monty. It's going to be the most agreeable day. It is. It's yeah. actually frustrating me <laughs> that you guys have agreed on every single game so far today. I hope we switch it up tomorrow. I'm sure we will. But for now, it's going to be the Ku Tigers for me. Unfortunately, I really want Payne to do well, but I cannot shake the fact that based on pure analysis, Ku Tigers are the better team here. All right, jumping over to Yamato Can and then back to Monty. Payne Gaming. Would feel a lot of. I just baited you. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I was like, oh, okay. Cool tigers, right. of course. I, I think cool, like this is psh, over. I agree. Right. Tigers are painful. It's coup for me too. It's gonna be a mauling. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Well, let's hand it off to our caster team to get us into game. On the way, Hojin tells us what it's like to be at Coup's first World Championship. But, 솔직히 이게 창단하고 아제 생애 처음 이게 롤드컵이기도 하지만 이게. 또 상단하고 처음 가는 그 롤드컵이라 되게 이렇게 잘안 믿겨지기도 한데 엄청 자랑스럽고 어 되게 얼떨떨하고 그런 것 같아요. Well, we'll have to see just how well Ku can do here, but let's not dilly dally. Get straight into the starting lineups. On the blue side to kick things off, it is Pain Gaming. In the top side, it is Mile on the jungle. Sir T mid is Kami. BRTT there in AD carry and Dude on support. And on the red side, it's the Ku Tigers. Up top is Smeb in the jungle. Hojin mid Kuro, AD carry Prey and support Gorilla. Obviously, we remember Gorilla uh, from previous Worlds performances. He's an incredibly proficient peel support player. He was arguably the best Jenna at Worlds when he was playing it. And 
now with Brahm in the meta, it's again another champion that he can play, that he can peel on, but he can also get a hint of aggression in there. And just in general, these champ selects are going to be incredibly interesting to follow because Ku Tigers, while they not may have may not have the most mechanically like gifted players in the rankings of world, obviously these guys are very good. They have incredibly deep champion pools. They can play so many different champions. Yeah, the champion select for Ku Tigers is one of the most interesting parts because. They have all these counter picks, and because they do bring out the uh, different styles with the Malphite comboed with Ash and things like that. Uh, Smeb, though, definitely going to be a big power player for them up in the top lane. Yeah, and Payne, respecting the Galista, even though she got nerfed to it, Galista was the most banned champion, banned against Ku in their games over there in the LCK. That she got banned out 24 times against the Ku Tigers, so Payne Gaming still respecting that. Don't want to go up against Brain Gorilla, you know, with. A lot of these range supports that supplement that Kalista so, so well. Yasuo gets uh, taken away immediately too, and then the Koo Tigers react. Rek'Sai, and you do not want to give Mordekaiser to Brazil. <laughs> That's just something you don't do. I mean, nobody's gotten Mordekaiser today. It's been banned every single game, I believe, but especially don't give it to the Brazilians. It's Gangplank and Lulu, very standard, going to clean us off here as we're really fast through the bans here in this last chance okay. for the so day. So Darius and Fiora are both up here. Elise and Lee Sin both open too. We actually have seen less Lee Sin yeah. we expected. I would have expected the, the, just the S tiers uh, coming in, you know, at least high and then uh, matching that early aggression to Lee Sin, but we very often see tank responses I and mean, finally... If somebody's going to pick Lee Sin, yeah. <laughs> his name used to be Lee, so there you go. Hojin, the cap team captain there for Ku, is going to lock that one in very quickly. We will have two very good early game jungling champions. Uh, we'll see if they actually use those early game champions uh, to affect in the early game. As it was mentioned, both these teams, very long average game times. I love what you can do as well with the Thresh Lee Sin combo. You can launch it in for lane ganks, you can come around with Lee Sin with flanks, you can even roam together and make such crazy picks. I mean, there's plays from, you know, kick flash to hook. There's so many possibilities for a team that, you know, is pretty controlled and has in my opinion, good vision control. Ku Tigers can really use that to their advantage. Also, Lucian doesn't get punished for buying a Sidestone. I mean, he's, it's, it's fundamental to a lot of these ward hops. So, double Sidestone vision control coming out from Ku. Really good against these slow teams like Pain Gaming. Just to slowly dismantle them and take it away from them. They do pick up Darius, one of the stronger top laners. Yeah, a bit more aggressive, actually. Maybe not so slow here as Alistar is the second pick there for Pain. But like we've seen pretty much all tournament long today, Jungle support, very common. First two picks over on the red. So, so where do Ku want to go with the rest of their team comp? Looks like when they want to keep Darius at arm's length here, just as Stake tried to do there in the NAR Darius matchup, uh, and keep him slowed enough to try and kite. Yeah, I may have been underrating that NAR pick. I thought amongst the wealth of top lane champions, NAR kind of felt old. But he does bring a lot of, of kiting to the table, keep your distance, and then with the Black Cleaver, you can whittle them down, re-engage. Uh, but it, it is tricky to play in team fights because you obviously come in with a lot less health because you can't build full tanks, so you really have to be careful. But if there's any top laner that can pull that off, you know, both the split push part and the teleport, and it will definitely be Smeb, one of the stronger top laners at this tournament. Plus, I like how, you know, they combo with the initiation from the bottom lane here. Ash Arrow is going to stun somebody, so he'll be there uh, in time for the NAR transformation. This was probably the quickest draft we've had all yeah. game. We're, we're still talking about like this card that was early picked up yeah. and we're done. <laughs> Ari's locked in already, so very, very, yeah. Different team comes here, coming out. Yeah. Ku Tigers with a lot of engage, a lot of pick potential. Yeah. yeah. Pain Gaming actually really heavy on that team fighting there, going with the Sivir to speed up their Juggernaut for Darius there, as well as uh, Alistar going to tow the front line alongside him. And Azir for Kami should be a nice pick there up against Kuro. We've talked about it here. We look at Pain Gaming. Kami, what a force as far as Brazilian players go. One of the best Brazilian mid laners. In fact, Scratch that. Probably just one of the best Brazilian probably players. Probably just the best Brazilian player here. Yeah. Uh, not here at World. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Probably, one of, probably the best of Brazilian player. Uh, really popular there too. And I would have loved to see his TF. I really like seeing it. He has this, this style of, of just early upgraded boots into home guards and he starts roaming because I think that's where maybe the opening was against Kuro, who is. Traditionally, coming into this match, I would expect a laid-back passive top laner, but then he locks in Ari instantly going for the aggression. So, Ku Tigers with a very heavy yeah, pick composition coming out of here. Yeah, we'll see if Kami can keep up the pressure on his ear, try and put pressure that turret um, and avoid the Elise ganks. You know, they do have both early game junglers there, or avoid the Elise ganks. Azir should be able to push in that lane early, at least, but then he has to just dodge the ganks. That is the hard part. Charm and Cocoon incredibly 
a potent crowd yeah, combination. Yeah, it's a drawback anytime you are the one trying to pressure the turret. Well, we'll have to see when we get into the rift. But before we do, be sure, head, be sure to head over to Twitter and cast your votes for this game. Tweet the hashtag PNGWin or hashtag KOOWin to at Elevel Esports. And we'll update the fan poll once we're on the rift. And again, it's hard to think what to really expect from this game. I mean, Main Gaming certainly coming in as more of an underdog here. And Ku, a team that Definitely. we're looking at good things, but maybe not great things. But both these teams have a chance to challenge that now on the roof for the last time today in Paris as we kick things off. Payne versus Ku Tigers. And Payne Gaming, probably the, the strongest wildcard team we, we've yep. have ever had at Worlds, but still going up against Ku Tigers. That is still a very big mismatch, especially since Pain game is biggest weakness, their game length, we talked about it so much. It is six minutes and 30 seconds longer than Ku's average game length, and Ku Tigers are just, they ramp up towards that mid to late game. Maybe not with this composition, because it is relatively uh, early to mid-oriented with those picks. Yeah, and delving a little bit more into the reasons you know, why they have had these really long games, uh, they've sort of struggled with initiation, you know, both picking the champions and as, as well executing. Right now, though, we may have some early action as they look to collide yeah, everything might be off here as we are going to get spotted by a ward. Our oh. Gorilla going to lead the charge. There's no vision though. He's going to get a crest on. Boomerang played out. He's forced to flash out. Mylon goes straight in though. Hojin and Spurb get knocked up by Alistar. Spurb's ignited. He is dead for first blood. Mylon going to get shot on. Play. Oh, oh, he does get it. But the Boomerang blades out. Two for one there. No respect there for the Bryce coming in there. Face second completely. Do you actually help this Pelvis incredibly long? He could have. He could have cast out a lot earlier. Yeah, very I was surprising. actually very worried for Pain, even though Pain had the extra ward, so they had the vision advantage. Because they weren't all grouped together in that brush with the Alistar, you know, face checking the Alistar is a number one no no for the level ones, and yet he was out on the outside and used his flash to try and get in the middle and separate the two tigers on the invade. Cutting them off is one of the biggest things to deny. Auto attack DPS is the most important thing in level ones. Uh, we have a lane swap here, stealing away the Krugs. Smeb has no clue. He's going into lane. This could be very big if they can force him off immediately because Smeb expected everybody to base. Being down, no double jungling from the start of the game. This could put Pain behind or ahead in momentum because Kami, as expected, is pushing in that mid lane. Well, hard to set up for a lane swap when level one was as crazy as it was. We can see Pain are sticking together. Mylon and Sir T there. The 2v1 has been initiated and Smeb even with a bit of range. Yeah, Mylon's double jungling with Surti right now, and Smeb, he's, he's at the range. It's very hard to deny a Gnar because he can just bully out the support, especially if it's not a range support. But again, they're moving up in melee. This is Western style lane swap. Very, very, very high tempo, and if you stay around level one, you just, yeah, you're just getting gold. Yeah, see, he's backing off already. Smeb knows that it is too dangerous for him, so he's going to leave. However, you talked about the double jungling. Smeb not going to be getting any experience income. Yeah, now they can go for an early tower push and also bounce away if once Mylon and Sir T are, are done clearing this jungle, then obviously they'll send Milo up to the top lane, bounce the wave if they follow the traditional Western style lane swap, and suddenly Milo will be spiraling ahead of Smep on that Darius. Incredibly important matchup for the pace of this game. And they're gonna nick the red buff as well, though. It should be a trade here with both teams jungling vertically. Kami, though, look how far forward he is standing to the strong side of his map. It's because the map is obviously divided in two halves. This is what we expect CLG to do, but then they mind game, you know, by doing that fancy shenanigans level one. And this is Kami respecting it. Lean to the side where you are strong, avoid the side where you are weak. It sounds very simple, but many people have failed that in the past. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen it many times. All right, so while Ku are going to be able to catch up, there are the camps available to them. Yeah. They're still behind in the time. So they are going to be much later to taking down the turret. Uh, we'll see if this translates at all into send, uh, any sort of dragon pressure here. Let's see what pain can actually get accomplished in this early game. Yeah, and aside from the first blood goal, things look relatively even, but something you really have to track at these lane swaps is the experience gained and how efficient it has been gathered, especially on these top laners, because bot lanes, they can play from behind a lot easier, especially once those potions kick in. Look at Mylon, he's not gonna do what Huni failed to do, he's actually gonna try and take that tower, make the wave bounce back, and then obviously, BRTT and the U, they're gonna move back into bot lane with extra potions. They don't really care, as long as he'll never run into a prey with a BS sword, they don't really care that they've been the first ones basing. Again, the tempo is now on Pain Gaming's side. Delicious solo gold for both top laners, I believe, as Smeb does take out the bottom side as well. We are going to move Pain Gaming's duo back to the bottom lane, though. Yeah, especially since they're running Sivir here for BRTT. He might be able to get that uh, wave up to the turret and make it crash and get it bounce the other way, even though Ku were able to get it pushing towards them as they left it. 
This man be at the base, so he was very low on resources. Wanted to pick up some items, wanted to pick up some sustain to avoid being dove, and he, he's still he's still not getting any XP, so he only had some experience being grouped with his team. He's level three right now. He's gonna head over to my screen, strike that Mylon. All right, even with really? Silver, yeah. not gonna be able to push it quick enough here. They're actually and surprisingly even. Mylon is exactly on the same amount of experience as Smep, so to see how well BRTT can deny Smep in the bot lane, and vice versa, how well Prey can deny Mylon in that top lane. Yeah. Calculation there from Hojin on the Cutter Crab, but Dude does come down. Has been taken, so vision there for Ku over on the river area, but continuing to group together around these turrets and try and push things down. So BRTT not wasting time. Here's the thing that you look for in this instance. For Pain Gaming, they do have the numbers advantage. What you want to do is drop a deep ward from your jungler, so have your top player and teleport, teleport in, and here they come. Prophet Kobe! <laughs> oh, it's always like he's good here. Is, we are going to have a die. Flash Cocoon is going to land. Smith is going to get absolutely obliterated. BRTT going to clean up that kill as Hojin running for his jungle, hoping it is safe. And there might not be any follow-up, but that was well played. And this is an incredibly big mistake from the Ku Tiger, sending your support to the top lane. It looks mirrored, it looks even, but you can't afford to do that because obviously you're playing as a top laner that can just peace out. He teleports <laughs> to the bot lane, then again he gets the waves bound to him again, and he spirals ahead from Smeb. Smeb, the top lane carry from Ku Tiger is probably the best I'm individual player on their roster, and he's slowly falling behind. Yeah, I'm pretty disappointed actually in Ku Tigers. They saw him walk over the Scuttle Crab. If you say, oh, the support is in my jungle. Oh, the enemy jungle is also there. That's enough for, to account for everybody. You know they have teleport. Korean advice, just outplay them. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't work this time though. What's, I'm, I'm what's impressed by playing game is lane swap. And in all seriousness, one of the issues that's been highlighted for Q, excellent mid and late game play, especially macro, but yeah. the early game has suffered before, and Pain right now are playing with a lot of vigor and a lot of really intelligent play here in the first seven minutes. Let's see what they can do with the early game here, though, because obviously you don't have the longest average game time uh, for coming no reason, into the yeah. tournament here um, among all teams. Uh, without a reason. Thing is, though, you know, they're also coming off a 16-0 streak, so... <laughs> Smeb is still ahead in experience <laughs> of Mylon, though. We keep praising how he's going ahead and getting out of control. <laughs> yeah. Still level down. Well. And most importantly, Hojin, while this is going on, he's actually out farming Sir T, so he's actually going to get that level 6 early, and if he can find one gank, he can nullify that entire advantage. Smeb right now forcing Mylon's Flash. Yeah. Turbo Gorilla comes in, flash Good play. play. Now gonna try and line things up here. The Gorilla gonna keep chasing. Throws out a Lancet. Hojin is gonna walk up away. Great hook there, lands on the mile, and that's gonna be a kill for sure as Hojin will pick it up. Great move there by Ku Tigers. And the response from Pain, they don't they don't have a response. They're farming their own jungle right now. They get a couple of deep wards on the side of the map that they already own. So really good move there by Ku to not only get their kill but also have everybody hop over the dragon wall and adorable. take the dragon as well. They are going to get it here. Pain on the top side, but it looks things all back in their base. BRTT, oh, look at that wave. Still pushing, but Smeb says look thank you very dive, much. Maybe. Yeah, they have to nail this dive. If they don't this get is, this dive, this is This is pretty, exciting. pretty greedy here from Koo. There's Dragon Smith. Great flash out of the headbutt. Pops out there, does the dosi do and gets out easy. Green advice, Scrap Bow, just outplay it. <laughs> Stop playing, dude. Soak that experience. Even if you die right now, you soak half wave. You've done your job. Oh, this is... Yeah, this is sad for Pain Gaming. They had a the momentum, they had all the right plays, and then they do exactly what they should. They send their top laner alone with no backup from a tower. Their jungle wasn't even close. Their support wasn't even close. And he drops. And not just their top laner, Darius, whose big weakness is that he has no dashes. He doesn't even have the, the option of trying to get the speed boost yet, so. And really good synergy there from the Ku though, because what you said earlier about the lack of initiation, Nar hops in, forces Flash Gorilla, with Moby Boots, waits long enough to get a Flash play range. Yeah. Lantern comes in, Hojin joins the party, and suddenly, you know, Darius dies, and Mylon now, he's the one trailing behind. Certainly is here as Neb. Still picking up the CS lead, but a giant spell because he thinks he's a pretty big target here. Well, also, he, he may be hungry for more kills, you know, try and make a frozen mallet and look to punish Mylon even more in a long lane. Gnar with Black Cleaver is one thing, but with the frozen mallet, then you're really looking for kills. I mean, they said a Juggernaut's a strong, but all you gotta do is just kite him, and if there's any item that allows you to do that, it is the mallet. Go straight for the kneecaps with that <laughs> hammer. <laughs> Just take him out as Kami still pushing, doing well in this mid lane actually with a CS lead up against Kuro, using that early Azir power with that stinger to really shove in Ari. Yeah, Azir definitely uh, pushes that matchup early. It's when Ari really gets the higher levels and gets the, the burst that he can threaten the Azir, but 
Surprising Kuro here going for a very defensive build. Early magic just was uh, picked up, so no kill pressure on Kami, which means Kami is safe to continue doing what he's been doing the entire game. Because even if Charm connects, there's just not the damage enough, and now Pain Gaming grouping for that mid lane tower. No way to this goes down. 13 does get nailed by the arrow. Charm will land. Kuro's gonna go all in. Boja gets denied. Moved out there by Kami, and the ignite's not enough. Great cleanse from Kami, showing off his skills. Whoa, everybody collapses there to protect Sir T. That was pretty well played. Did it someone tell me I Kami mean, was good? Did that? Did I get that message? I mean, he could have technically repelled the arrow before he came in, but everything after that was perfectly played. Denies the Lee Sin mid-air, repels the REQ. Then Diut steps in to block the Lee Sin Q. Pain Gaming are playing very organized. Come on, Carlo, that is a very hard repel. That thing is coming from, I don't think anybody saw it. Okay, there is a ward in River. Ah, and he pressed D, so but it, I mean, pressed it, by his team, okay? If they saw it come through the river, yeah. But the thing there, they kind of abandoned him under the turret while he was stunned. Here comes Bylon, yes. though. He's all alone. Trouble he for Darius. Flash this time. Hooker land plays there as well. It's just another easy kill. Who's going to get it? Oh, the heal's good. Might be enough to keep him alive, but probably not as Hojin gets it again. Yeah, you'd think Mylon would learn. Turbo Gorilla comes in again. You know, those Moe boots really paying off. He doesn't go for the early side zone, does something. Supports in Korea started doing a lot in season four. Moby boots with two green wards early and then just move around the map. Get really, really high efficient wards and then use that mobility to make picks, especially against a low mobility top laner like Darius with no flash. Yeah, so it's interesting how Payne actually played, you know, the early stages of the lane swap, but only up for a couple minutes there. Once the, all the outer turrets are down, next phase of that is to get up all these defensive wards and vision because you have no more turrets on the outskirts and Ku have just been running through Pain territory, taking advantage of it. I mean, Pain Gaming did not go to Korea to scrim. They went to Europe and scrimmed European challenger teams. So yeah, their playbook from European lane swap only went to Pain 3 and then it was like, three, we've got four guys, minutes, three, four minutes in. Book, book's empty, boys, what do we do next? And they start crumbling down a little bit and Mylon is really feeling the pressure from a very organized Ku here. Another arrow coming Oh, in. Kami is gonna juke out of the way. No clan, so he will stay safe under his tower. But a nice little, very cute move there from Praise Ash. All right, all that being said, gold is even right now, and we're even at map control and 2-2 two, two turrets, both mid lane standing. So now they're starting to get um, a lot better defensive vision after the second kill there. Three pink wards now down in the blue side jungle for pain. A lot of respect though from Kuro with that build. Early Abyssal on Ari. I feel it's like, it's, it's like a mix. You're playing a picks champion, you're playing an assassin kind of, but you're building it as you know, control. Make sure you don't die, and then provide those charms for CC. So, Bane looking to uh, pressure mid again, and every time they step up to the turret, Ku immediately start to collapse, looking for those Ash arrows. That's all. But it's not really costing them too much. BRTT is still even farm with Prey, so even though Prey is going up to suck up that side farm, he's taking a lot, which usually means that your mid lane is falling behind because of that early lead that Kami had over Kuro in terms of CS. He is still bang on even. So, overall even early to mid game. We'll have to see if that, you know, mid to late game macro can really start kicking in for Q. It's been a couple minutes until we really get to that stage of the game and Dragon is coming back 55 seconds as well. Q, they've already gotten the first one, so can they continue the good thing they've set up here in the early game? I do expect them to stack it and, ooh, Kami, not, not hit by that charm. Blue minion taking the hit for him. Still has cleanse available, but he was really quick on that cleanse earlier. Mm -hmm. I want to hook him in, there was almost no delay there. The virtues of playing on 8 pink. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, you mentioned the dragon. We're already only 30 seconds away, and Pain have not really made any move yet to get their vision down. So, looks like it's going to be up to... No, it's the cleanse this time! Hyojin cleans him out now as the ulti goes out from Thresh. Kuro's going to get a next kill on just 30 as Diud. He is caught out. The ulti's going to wear off soon. There's too much chase here. Gets played back there. It's going to be a third kill. That was a fantastic engage from Tigers. Yeah, he's quick on the cleanse. If he can see the projectile coming, but he couldn't see that arrow. Immediate follow-up as well. Tigers take three kills, one mid lane tower, and he can still bounce back to Dragon. What a shot there from Prey and... Kuro is able to follow up very easily. 100% zero there for Kami. Turret down number one. Looks like they are going to be able to stick around for turret number two and Dragon. Yeah, and that shows you the value of getting vision before that objective spawns because you obviously you're playing into the dark. Milo had teleport available, but wasn't even time. He's like, guys, do you need to tell? Oh, never mind. Yeah, I mean, you really got to respect this Ash pick. There's a reason that Ku uh, were one of the first to pick it up. And the initiation there from Prey 
definitely paying off this time. PR, uh, PRTT and the rest of Pain can try and answer here, though. A quick shove on the mid lane. And they might be able to get it. Out of Fake Lantern, mm, the classic. They, yeah, they got a little bit too scared there. Uh, Gorilla with the bluff. There's no wave clear on the way. If they had committed to that turret, they could have got it, but... Yeah, if they were playing with with perfect vision, they would definitely commit to the tower. That tower would have yeah. been gone, but Gorilla with some yeah, smart fresh play there. All you need to do is throw the lantern. Hey, Nobody needs to actually click it. Mylon let him know every time Gorilla comes over with a lantern, he's going to be looking for your head. Pain are going to be able to collapse and grab Dragon at least. Yeah, Q actually sort of seed that objective. Huh. Need to go back. Maybe don't feel confident in the position right now to try and fight. And Kuro could get caught, but not just yet. I mean, Pain Gaming, they are 4,000 gold behind. All they need is one decent fight though to come back because they, they they scale incredibly well into the later stages of the team fight silver with the aoe does a lot of damage and having a control mage on such a proficient player as kami on a this year with cleanse it is hard for ku to deal with that once he has vision to really make that cleanse work if he sees the projectiles coming he can cleanse out of that move out you know should we might shuffle his way into a couple of kills so ku tigers very distinctive lead, but by no means is it over. Yeah, plus they'll probably be having Alistar on the front lines um, or Sivir to Spell Shield. So yeah. they do have a lot of answers for the arrow as long as it's not, you know, Sir T. Well, even he can repel it if he does see it coming. Uh, the key is reaction speed here yeah. for all of Pain's and Vision. Answers. And that's the thing I love about the pick from uh, Ku. You mentioned, you know, it was Ash that. They've sort of seen a lot of fear, but it's oh, just that tactical again. advantage. Oh, Whoa. never mind. Dude, actually going to go aggressive, but the rest of the Q's here. Hook does get cleansed off by Unbreakable Will with a kickback. Cannot be moved off there. Hojin bounces back. Very cute play from the Q Tigers. And they'll get themselves a kill. The arrow lands on Tomylon. He's the next target. He'll flash out of the way. Now Kuro going to keep himself chasing, but Smeb's going to jump all the way in. Might be enough to secure a few more. They dive straight for it. I don't know, dude saw red right there on Alistar and he was like, Gorilla's here? I'm gonna go flash pull the head about you no. back. What happened is that he was, said, uh... I'm not gonna be out bluffed by a Korean support right here. I'm just gonna go in and fake aggression. But if you looked at the minimap, yeah. his AD carry was in Fountain. His mid laner was at his Nexus Tower to make that bold of a move against a team that has been grouping so much this game. There's Very no, bold move. Let's there's, this again. Keep there's your no eye on the payoff. There's no payoff to calling this blood. Like where BRTT is at his tier one tower. He is now basing mid lane. Azir is in full vision clearing ways. Literally, Why is the going in? The only way that play works for Pain is if Gorilla is all by himself and he's actually isolated. Well, buff call didn't work out that time. That's good cleanup here from Ku. Pain in the picture in picture though did scoop up the turret in mid lane finally, so gonna even things up a little bit here. And we're starting to learn why Pain Gaming's games go so long, because even if they have the right plays in the first five minutes, ten minutes, they do make these mistakes that top level teams should not be making, rash decision making. They play with a lot of passion as well. If you watch them, you know, at events, there's so much, you know, shouting and camaraderie coming out of BRTT, but sometimes it's better to prevail and have a, have a cool head coming into the game, especially against such a Methodical team like Who Tigers. I think in that sense, it's a really cool matchup as far as you know personalities of the team go. But are we making puns? Oh, right now, Ku really got it. They actually are going to pull the trigger. Ulti does miss uh, BRT2. A flash at the blue buff just barely misses as Dio doesn't get arrowed either. Ku trying to start something here. Pain though really just want their blue buff. But they're peeled off the mid wave. We have to see if BRT2 can take this on. Yeah. Not pushing on. Ooh. Baron hasn't even spawned yet. They're playing the Baron Vision game already, and it's not even up yet. So, yeah. so you have to wait until 20 minutes. That blue buff gets smited away by Hojin. Yep, does get it. Smeb actually chasing here. Does have that frozen mallet, like you mentioned. Hook will be just a little wide as Cersei jukes himself out of the way. Kuro going in out of the BRTT, but Milo's going to pick him up. BRTT will tie there to pray as he flashes over. And Ku, no Baron just yet, but they do get themselves a kill. Full commitment on that one as well. AD carry flash going in there. Yeah, this uh, game has been played on like one lane at a time yeah. here for, for the last five minutes. No split pushing going on, no double lane push, just single jungle control, fight over bush, one wave, and that plays into the hand of the Goo Tiger. So much CC, especially when they're ahead. If this game was even, maybe you can make a case for, for the wrong amount of damage and control coming out, but Pain Gaming consistently on the back foot. They've never really engaged the fight themselves first because they're constantly getting engaged on bike tigers. has not wasted a second of the cooldown on his enchanted crystal arrow here for Ash. Constantly looking for the engages. And Gorilla as well on the front line with the roams. 
play after play being set up. And these early game items, they don't scale that well. You know, an Abyssal Scepter don't scale, doesn't scale that well later on, but if you can combine that with an early Morella Nomicum, just to keep using that, the benefits that you get of that item very early in the game, and obviously you can just snowball yourself ahead and make use of it, especially if you look at Prey right now too. Already finished Static Shift, Eye Edge combo, two Ab items in 20 minutes already. Abyssal is an incredibly uh, gold efficient item. The only thing when it doesn't scale is when you run out of slots. Yeah. Because uh, it is also a fairly cheap item. So once you get to the point where you have to sell it, then he'll start worrying about Combined it. Combined with Sword Shoes as well, he's going to be reducing nearly all of the magic resistance that the, the squishier members of Pain Gaming are picking up here. So Yeah, there doesn't look to be an Aegis in sight here for Pain. And as a result, it's been accurate reports, honestly, here about the Q Tigers. Strong mid game, maybe a little few, few missteps here and there in the early game. Pain were able to take it in the first five minutes or so, but almost 21 minutes in, Baron alive, dragging up in 30, and the Q have set up for objectives. Prey, he's looking for a fisher. He might have got BRTT, but instead he'll just push out the wave. And look at the vision control. Baron area completely dark, so all Q need to do is add two more wards to that already existing. Uh, initial ward line and then Pain Gaming. They don't have Hawkshot on their team. They have to face like multiple brushes or risk instead of going against early 22, 23 minute Baron from Ku Tigers, which yeah, seals the game. Yeah, you can see during that fog of war uh, toggle right there how scary it is to be on Pain right now and know that you're playing against a team with the Moby, Boots, Thresh, and an Ash. But they're going to try and defend so Red aggressive. here. Oh my god, the hook really? lands 13. He's going to get charmed up there. They'll take him out almost instantly. And now Milam could be in a bit of trouble. He does spin around Gorilla. Will get dunked as Kami collects the kill. Smed though, hops over to the Krugs. He's looking for the wraparound. Oh, oh she oh, oh, right all the way over. As Ari does get the double, make it a triple. Might even be more. Looking for the Quadra Kuro. No, not going to get it onto BRTT. As long as that Lee Sin Q was, he actually died to the red buff yeah. burn that Kuro had anyway. So Hojin didn't even get to connect. Could have make it in time for the damage. Just in case there was an additional he, potion out, anything. He traveled all that way for no payoff. And Akuro unfortunately will miss his potential. Penta as Ku pick up another nice fight. Prey is going to shove out this lane. Look to threaten another turret. Dragon back up also. Ku already have it. Yeah, if the goal was even, that could have been a good fight because there was a good Emperor's Divide there from Kami. But Pain Gaming just too far behind. Just initial damage. And you look, zero hesitation on Ku Tigers too. One CC lands, the next one connects. 13 didn't even have time to repel yeah, at all there. Gorilla's waiting for it the whole time here. He was just sitting in the brush behind Red, waiting for Sir T to walk up. Easy hook for him to land, and they get that initiative. There's the Emperor's Divide that you're talking about, and Mylon was able to get the execute, but it's really Kuro. Goes right back in for that. Kami Still also failed this cleanse. He, he expected Chomp to be there sooner, cleanse early, yeah. and then got hit by the Chomp. That really turned the tides of that fight. Kuro almost picked up the quarter kill there, and now spiraling out of control. Ku's vision is still, actually no, has been swept out for the majority. Pain Gaming did buy themselves some time by getting some wards in that Baron, but they shouldn't last all that long. Yeah, even getting wards on the Baron right now, it's still so risky for them to try and walk through their own jungle up towards the Baron. As you can see, things getting a little tricky here for Pain Gaming. We've got two items on Kami in the mid lane, but Ku. They've got two pretty much everywhere, and no one on pain really is the second item completed. 6,000 gold ahead for the team. They'll sweep out the crab to get vision around that Baron. Yeah, Prey picking up early Alacrity Boots as well. Wants to stay, uh, be able to kite and just peel backwards in the fights. Get in a prime sniper position to land one extra arrow. His arrows have been fantastic this game. Usually when I see Ash played, I'm left with a very uh, wanting feeling. I'm not really getting satisfied. Uh, I hate my Ash needs overall because it really isn't that great, but his arrows have been fantastic. Yet another one. Now, nice. finally, Bell shield. gets a little cocky. It's like, I can snipe Tiver. <laughs> and look at BRTT flashing that flare. Prey's been spamming it, I believe, in game. So nice to see them give a little back. But Q, very standard stuff for them. Going to set up here almost 25 minutes into the game, 24, in fact. And it's just dance around Baron. Dragon's not up. So, hey, Pain, come to us if you feel like fighting. Otherwise, they're just going to take the Baron and close out the mid games as cleanly as Q has done so many times in the LCK. There he goes, Cyril to get to pop. Oh, connects Cyril to does get cocooned up there. Damage around the side. Hojin kicks BRTT back in, and he's going to go down as Prey. Now on a killing spree, dude. Getting chased down. Smeb's going to get that kill. No kills just yet as Gorilla is low. Kuro will keep chasing. Good shuffle out there from Kami. Gets up under the charm of Hojin chasing. 
Hook does land. Hojin taking the Sun Turret, but he will not die. And it looks to be an AC. The last kill will go to Smeb. I was actually very confused with Same. you not popping his Alistar ultimate. You lose that on so much zone <laughs> control in a team fight. This is basically what Alistar brings to the mid game. A whole part of its huge zoning is popping the ulti. Yeah, if he just pressed R at any given point during that fight, he could have just stayed alive, sucked it down. It could have easily been uh, a one for zero trade here uh, on the side of Ku Tigers and and Pink Gaming could have escaped with at least one or two members if the youth pressed ulti. So very, very peculiar. Not sure what exactly happened there. In the end, doesn't really matter all that much. Ku Tigers pick up the Baron there now. 11k ahead. Five dragons has been thwarted too. So there's no really that win condition anymore because the game is spiraling too quickly out of control for Pink Gaming. Very, very tall task right now. All right, let's take another look yeah. here, yeah. Because Surti actually got the Flash to Kuna. Right now, he was right now. Changed. Yeah. Anytime. Right now. At, at this point, though, they're they're Still already late. on the run, right? And Ku's already got the re-engage. This girl has another charge left, so. And look at Gorilla, how low he goes in that fight. He was the one being initially aggressive, but he lands another hook at the end. Almost gets taken out there by Kami, but uh, he's been playing very, very well. 0 one, 14 no mishaps, no accidental kills ending up in his lap. <laughs> Though I will be disappointed. He will. The bloodthirst not strong with Gorilla today, but a wonderfully executed team fight from Crew Tigers and the Baron buff leads them with almost all the advantages they should need to close this game out. We've heard about how efficient they are in the mid game, how quickly they clean you off the rift. Yeah, dude. an odd Kuro call right here to go <laughs> guys, for guys, split pushing and then looking this. for a solo kill inside the red area. Uh, Payne do have a little bit of defensive warding there, so they saw him, but whatever. He's got Baron buff. He can he can pull off a split push. I mean, I like the attempt from Payne to pop the Silver Ult and try and force the 4v5. Arrow hits on the dude. Nice cleanse off. Find the ulti button. That's really big. It lessens the Payne Gaming's team fight strength, and they're about to get 1v1. There is no counterplay for them because they're locked in. Really hard to move out of that. Smeb is in top, Kuro in the bottom. Kuro can perfect definitely. vision. Hawk shot, so many options here for the Blue Tigers. So Kuro is a little bit wary right now. He's not staying at the turret because he has no vision for himself. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't actually have any wards he can play, so he's waiting to see the rest of the team. Uh, didn't want to take any chances. Another seed's gonna get set up. We talked about the 1 2 1 before. It's a bit more like a 4 1 now, but. Kuro with that loot and Zeko just continually applying pressure does really shove mini waves out fast with this build with all those purple items. And painters have to sit and hope something happens good for them. Yeah, and obviously Crew Tigers here, they just want to close as efficiently as they can. Don't want to make any mistakes like getting caught here by Kami, for example. Tried to make the play, but he didn't quite get it. The flashes are burnt. Really getting low. Rylai's is good for a few slows here. So Kuro. Kami actually forced the double summoners out of Prey with that move. It was a really good flash there from Prey to stay alive, but Kami traded uh, Flash there to try and get the initiation. And he knows he has to make plays here. Kami is the big player on this team. We expected him to really deliver, and he has in this game, but it's just a little too tough. Not sure why the Ku Tigers stopped split pushing. They had Pain Gaming in a perfect lock in a 1-3-1, but they decided to make it a group around that top lane tower. Kuro could have easily pushed about uh, one member away and then maybe pulled her on. So who felt safer in numbers. That is the way they got ahead in the early to mid game, though. So with that uh, stack CC. But if you look at Kuro's build, he's he's really built for that 1v1 right now because that epistle is still paying off, the sword shield is still paying off, Ludens. That initial proc just doesn't just add some extra damage. So a lot of mobility overall. So if you find Kuro alone in the brush, probably not the best thing for you. No, not a good time here. But like you mentioned, uh, builds, an interesting build. Just Smeb, we talked about the Ku Tigers. Being innovators with strategies is hey maybe Smith's attempt. He didn't get to play items. a juggernaut, but he can buy it. <laughs> he buy like certainly a can. Build your, build, build your, build yeah. your juggernaut composition. Yep. He's certainly doing some nice damage here, Smith. Cut the vantage spell in as well. So yeah. things working out one way or the other here for Q. As they take dragon number three. Probably not going to need the fifth, but always feels like good a, to have it. Feels like a stake item to me. I'm you just okay. absorb as much damage as you can, and I'm, suddenly you come back stronger. Yeah, I'm really not a big Stakes fan. Gauge. I'm not a big fan of Steric's Gauge. It's uh, just the item by itself is extremely gold inefficient. Uh, you really have to make use of the passive, and a lot, a lot of the usefulness of the item comes from you know one of the Juggernauts kit where they have these full AD ratios, which actually get boosted extra, or if you have a Trinity Force where he doesn't really have yep. either, but no, he, he can do whatever he wants right now, so. It does reward you for taking damage. Sure. That's been <laughs> this game. Yeah, you can, you can deal more damage if you take more damage. Pretty annoying one way or the other. 
Milan not having a nice time there, 1v1, as they're going to shove in 4-1 once again here. Barimov has dropped, no major objectives on the map just now, but Kurv an absolutely insane gold lead in under 30 minutes. And again, just looking to close things up, they've done this time and time again. They're such a practice team, and when they get ahead, better believe they stay ahead. Yeah, they do stay ahead because they play with the necessary caution. No uh, overstepping of their boundaries here with respect. So if they don't get too many towers or any hit after, they don't really care because the map is completely in, under their control. Pain Gaming don't even remember what the river looks like. They haven't been even outside of their base in the last five to 10 minutes, it feels. So the wheel are forcing the cleanse there. Slowly but surely, whittling away. Now we see an engage. Oh, Smeb! That went through a spell shield, tried to go in onto BRTT, but Hojin gonna dive in! Kuj is going absolutely nuts as Kuro is gonna get that first kill. Gorilla is low there, Kami trying to ditch out the deep, but it's Carnage here in the base as Pain Gaming is just too far behind. The ace will be completed and that may just be game. Slow and steady and immediately explosion. Ku Tigers ace for one in return. Gorilla drops his second death of the game and a look at the closeout. They are gonna finish things off you. It is business as usual for the Ku Tigers as they play their first game here in Paris. Early game was a whole lot of fun, but Ku showing where they are such a strong team that must be feared in this World Championship. The vision control game of Ku, uh, the playmaking there the from Gorilla, the accuracy of the arrows from Prey, even though some of them were spell shielded or cleansed, he still I don't think he whiffed a single one. Yeah, I mean, look look at the lineup. If you have to play Ash into an Elise that can repel Kami on a Zir that can shuffle or cleanse, you have Spell Shield and you have Alistar, that seems like Ash's nightmare. But still, he found multiple openings. Even though the early game with that level one first blood was relatively easy, or even rather, the speed at which Ku Tigers propelled forward, they ended the game 20,000 gold ahead, 61k against 41k. That is a massive goal lead, and you would not expect that if you watched the first 15 minutes of this game, so very impressive performance. And an efficient game as well, 31 minutes for the Crew Tigers, cleaning up as many times as they have in the LCK. They've been such a consistent team, unfortunately for them, not too many first place, unless you count the regular season standings, but they've been just such a strong team ever since they were created. The level of consistency they show is reflected in their play, and for an opening game here, I'm very impressed. Yeah, and even though Ku Tigers were the big favorites in this game, they still, you know, have pressure on their shoulders because of the showing that they had at the last international tournament, you know, at yeah. IEM. They do not want to make any sort of missteps, even in games where they're the favorites here. So being able to finish out cleanly like that and playmaking is uh, definitely something that they are looking to accomplish. Yeah, and a win is expected here by, by the Tigers, but in a convincing fashion that may draw potential bans in the next series, you know, against CLG and the Flash Wolves. Those are the games these guys are preparing for the most, so may not have even showed uh, any of their fancy tricks that they have, because they have incredibly deep champion pools. I mean, Smeb and Core, those are champions, you, uh, champions, players you will never be able to ban out. They will always have a trick up their sleeves, whether it's Cheeky Malphite or whatever. So we'll definitely have to see what they do against the likes of CLG yeah. and Flash Wolves. Things keeping standard at least for today. And that's, I think, the last thing we heard from the analyst desk is that, you know, Monty sort of predicted they don't have to play anything crazy, and they didn't. And they still finished the game in the same very efficient, very clean manner they always have. Yeah, I mean, they've played all those champions before, so uh, no big surprises. Exactly. Not yet. <laughs> I'm sure it's coming. If Amazing Jay's going to be hovering Garrow, and I'm sure the Ku Tigers have something really fun cooked up. Yeah, I mean, uh, the one story that does come to mind is often in the LCK, Gorilla likes to hover Soraka. We yeah. haven't seen her here yet. And they always joke about, oh, yeah, he loves the champion, but he's, he's never picked it. I think Soraka, from from like a stat carry on, is incredibly efficient. The amount of health you mm -hmm. can, you know, transfer so efficiently. It just happens that a lot of Soraka players like getting caught. And once she drops, uh, it becomes hybrid. Hey, I'd love to see some Gorilla, <laughs> you know, positioning play on Soraka. Sure, he brought Janna this year. Okay. Well, Snooze we'll Fest. <laughs> we'll see about Soraka later, gentlemen, but let's send it back over to the analyst test to wrap up day one of the 2015 World Championship. Thank you, gentlemen. And I want to touch on what Crepo uh, was hitting pretty, uh, pretty soon after the game ended there. The first 15 minutes of this game was really close, and I want to point towards the solid macro play of Pain Gaming because we had some questions about, you know, coming from the international wildcard regions, up into this international play, especially playing against a team like the Ku Tigers, and they put up some really solid play there in the early stages of the match. Yeah, they played out that after the situation after level one very well, and some people were down on pain coming into this 
you know, they didn't show the best play in the CB Lowell finals, even though they won 3-0. But when they came around and came into that international wild card match, it really looked like they had leveled up their macro game in a very short amount of time. So I guess I had a little bit more faith in them. I like their use of double teleport in those matches. So this is something that I think is a good trend for a team like Pain Gaming, even though they couldn't close this one out. I have to add, like, I expected like very little from Pain Gaming. And with this game in mind, I think the early game was very good, as you mentioned. And I think like for COG and Flash Fools, I would be like, those games are going to be a lot closer than I expected. So it's going to be an interesting group. I'm going to return to that point a little bit to look at the whole the group as a whole. But uh, hammering home, you know, this game here, it was relatively close until a certain point. We started to see Ku make some moves to really separate the game. Monty, who was the standout player here that was the catalyst for that from Ku? Well, it's always the same player in the early game if we're talking about starting to pick up the snowball for the Ku Tigers, and that's going to be Gorilla because in the laning phase, they always make plays around Gorilla. He moves very efficiently on the map, and we can take a look at some of this just very, very good thrush play we're seeing right here, and he is the catalyst that causes this reaction to occur in the Ku Tigers, which then results in a very strong mid and late game. Yeah, just a lot of presence around the map, really, and presence of mind. You know, when they did start in the hole, about five, 600 gold right off that level one, to really uh, make the plays around the map necessary in this I mean, just play here. A gorgeous arrow and then setting it up, and they chained the hook into the charm so well. Ku's team fighting is a major strength of theirs. And, you know, really, this is for me, this is just a classic Ku Tigers game. There's a problem in the early game. Maybe they fall behind a little bit. Then Gorilla starts getting free on the map, starting to make plays. They pick up a few kills, and then it just chains into great team fighting, fantastic vision control, and then fantastic objective control, and then they win decisively from there. All right, Crumbs, I want to come to you to kind of re-hit the pain gaming point because as we established, they did have some solid macro play, but if you had to point a weakness, where did that fall apart for them? A lot of times when teams are trying to learn how to perfect their macro play, they will overcommit resources to make sure that the play happens. So an example was the TP play in the early game where they went to die the Lee Sin and the Nar. They were only able to get one kill, but they wasted the teleport. And a lot of mistakes like that are usually the, the trend for teams that are learning, and that happened, but it's a good sign that they're really understanding what they need to do, but they just need to refine it a little bit better. But one thing that we talked about the Ku Tigers that's pretty cool is that they played a very similar style to what KT plays, in which the jungle and the support roam a lot together. The kill participation between Hojin and Gorilla were 100% for the large majority of the game. And that's something that we really see from KT. So I think tomorrow we'll see very similar trends also throughout the tournament of KT style and Ku Tigers just kind of mixing each other because it's very likely that they were common scrim partners throughout the entirety of the preparation of the tournament. It's something I would like to touch on is once again the Darius. We've seen Darius a lot today and in this game as well. And this might sound very bold, but I think when it comes to Darius, his strengths are absurd, that's for sure. But his weaknesses are very obvious as well. He's very weak against range, he's very weak against kiting as well. And I think Ku showed it in the draft. It wasn't really necessarily needed because they kind of outplayed pain. But I think Darius has very obvious weaknesses. And I think that's going to show as we prolong this tournament. Well, in that highlight right there, we saw him exploited as well with his lack of escape as Gorilla was able to find early kills to pull them back into it. Though the champion has weaknesses, I think today is not a good showcase of the champion because no team today that had Darius played to the strengths of the hero. Nobody helped him effectively. Nobody was really doing anything with the champion. You want to pair him with a diving champion that you can just permanently push in the lane and tower dive over and Hold over up. and over. But then again, it's like Darius, he's been blind picked. That is where I find the dangerous thing. He's been blind picked. He has very obvious weaknesses. He's been exposed with the Gnar, and I think it's going to continue like that. I think Darius is very strong in scenarios where you have to walk into him but not when you have to kind of engage because you just get, he just gets kited. Well, that's why you tower dive, though. You pair him with a tower diver, <laughs> and that's it. We'll you see, we'll see. Well, as the, as the, uh, the tournament develops, it'll be interesting to track that as teams either pick him later, earlier, and what, the, what and how they use him. Now, what I do want to return to is your point about, you know, CLG and Flash Wolves and how they might stack up. Now that we've seen the four teams in this group play, particularly when we take a look at Pain Gaming, and we say, well, if they play as they did in the early game there, against you know CLG and Flash Wolves who weren't able to do as much in their early game, that could definitely swing those games. 
I, I think that's true. We we do have to remember that that level one did occur, mm -hmm. right? So there is there was a little bit of an outlier right there because Ku made some errors. Payne did a good job of capitalizing on them and getting a, a little bit of an early advantage. So I want to see Payne when they don't win a level one like mm. that, right? Because that's going to tell us a lot. All right, well, we'll have to track that as well. Let's track to the standings, though, to check how the standings and the teams are arranged in Group A. CLG and the Koo Tigers are 1-0, with the Flash Wolves and Pain Gaming still looking for their first win. Then in Group B, Fnatic and Cloud9 are on top 1-0 over Invictus Gaming and AHQ. And in Group C, Edward Gaming and SK Telecom stand tall 1-0 over H2K and the Bangkok Titans. Now we'll be back tomorrow with another six games as the teams continue their march towards the Summoner's Cup. It's it starts with KT Rolster against Team Solo Mid. Then China's number one seed LGD will face off against Europe's Origin. After that, the Bangkok Titans will challenge the Season 3 World Champions SK Telecom. All that will hit your streams tomorrow at 7 a.m. Pacific Time, 4 p.m. Central European Summertime. Now that we've gotten a look at some of the teams today, though, guys, what are you excited about tomorrow, matchup-wise, team-wise? Group D, absolutely. <laughs> the group that we haven't seen yet, the one that has a lot more fan hype around it. And, you know, the teams are all kind of not really expecting that much out of themselves. We saw earlier today with the video that LGD isn't even sure they're going to make it out of the group themselves, which is like, <laughs> why would they even know? I mean, they even said that I, themselves. I think I'm that's like, just a little chess, humility you know? there. Yeah, uh, but across. still, though, it's something. It's something to look forward to. And Darius, of course. Oh. Of course. We're looking for just a lot of Darius <laughs> to see how he's played. Yeah, but obviously it's Group T. I think there is no game in Group T that is going to be boring in a way, you know? I don't know. That first one's going to be pretty boring. We'll brush that one out. No problem. <laughs> All right. Well, that's that's fair. That's fair. Are there specific champions that we haven't seen come out today that we're still looking for that we may have expected to have seen earlier in the tournament? Hmm. More is I, uh, Fiora, I mean. Fiora, we saw just how ridiculous it was in the hands of Marin. I mean, he practically one shot of the blind, 100 to zero. The only reason he wasn't able to was because of the passive. That is a lot of damage that teams should be taking advantage of because Lulu has seen some play. Most likely we'll see more play throughout the tournament. It probably won't be perma-ban. You couple those two champions together, you're guaranteed to get the Fiora ultimate off because of the CC around her, the tankiness that she gets. And it's just such a powerful team fighting combination that I feel like the teams aren't taking advantage because of the weaknesses that Fiora may have in the laning phase. Monty, thoughts? Uh, we've seen the Yasuo bans. I mm. want to see the Yasuo picks coming in. Because okay. we've got some great Yasuo players, both in top lane and in mid lane, in this particular tournament. It's going to show up at some point, and that's what I'm looking forward to. It's like t t today, we've had very blue side dominated games. And uh, of course, they get that one power pick. But what I want to see teams do is to kind of do trades where they get the two power picks on the purple side where kind of everything OP gets unleashed. I want to see those type of games. Well, plenty of evolution for picks and bans to go through. Now, if you missed any of the action today, stick around because in just 15 minutes, Shox, Freak, and Officio will be breaking down the highlights from the day. Now, for myself, the casters, and the entire live broadcast crew, thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow. Solid for Ladies and gentlemen, let's get back onto the rift for game one of the group stages in the dark performance. They turn their focus to Kakao. There's the team fight. On sorts of shallows, throws IG's back line. Zatai's forced to retreat. That's a defensive flash. Emperor's divide will not pin Kakao to the wall. It's a battle on three fronts, and it's a battle that Fnatic is winning. And the hometown heroes strike first blood. What an upset in this group stage. Goes out, not gonna fly slow. Wow, more beautiful. to give up. You cannot say, I hate this game if the game is 1-5. No tilting allowed. Here comes the dive play. Back there, Warlock getting low. Mako, he's in trouble. He flashes up, but death! He's getting a first blood. That's a double kill. EDG in style take their first game here in Paris. Oh, that's a good play there. Gets the combo, but Mako stuff his way back in. He wants double. He pops the Zonius. Has to run out. He's so tanky with the help of Kramer. Gets Kikun. He'll get shut down. 
What a comeback right there. Ash, 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 ash. Oh! Uh, Milt, Milt. Milt nice. 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 Pops over to the crux. He's looking for the wrap around. Oh, 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 oh. Business as usual as they play their first game here in Paris.